yes, uh, it, because of intense Kundalini, I can talk fast. <laughs> because of intense Kundalini, I can feel very big ideas. I'm pretty good at that. And it's all because I began to get a larger aura. It's all because I paid attention to some of these things. Now, if I had paid more attention to diet and some things like that, I would have probably done better. But at least I'm here talking to you today. So, I, I would say uh, maybe one final thing about this as, as we conclude here. Um, in terms of uh, using uh, ascension and your bliss big aura to communicate with your environment, uh, I, I make some final comments. Uh, we know that um, it's, it's, it's very well known that elemental forces are angry with humans for not communicating with them. It's real. You talk to anybody who communicates with elemental forces. Elemental forces are like orbs. They're plasma balls that can survive only in certain environments. It will never be a steel or aluminum building. Never. No. They can survive in high environments of dialectic constant. Now, the elemental forces are things like tornadoes and hurricanes. Hello, this is a big plasma ball. Who is steering them? Hello, nobody. Why? Because we so stupidly... Actually, the large elemental forces consider the humans to be drunk because we don't talk to them, actually. And we don't talk to them because we don't know what living plasma is. We have all these mystical ideas about God and the divine, but you can't walk out in your backyard and see a plasma donut, like a, a unbeam or an elemental, feeding the life force to your plants. So if you can't talk to them and work with them, and first of all, they're not even going to exist if you're, you know, in an electrosmog nightmare in the big city. But if you're somewhere in nature, start working with the elemental forces because that is what's going to eventually steer a tornado the size of our planet as the solar wind goes up. So ascension means effectively, eventually you will see through the eye of the sun. And I, I did want to end with that actually. That you know, we started this group called Solar Heart Community at yahoogroups.com with all these shamans who had literally, literally seen to the eye of the sun. We know the geometry of the eye of the sun. It's the Anu slipped out seven spins inside, five spins outside, same as the heart of hydrogen. And we know that every shaman who's ever looked to the eyeball of the sun has agreed that the heart of the sun is cool and inviting. It's not warm at all. And we know why, because it's called cold fusion. <laughs> fusion actually is what creates that negentropy self-awareness and that's part of why the sun is the most self-aware being in our solar system and the only way in and out of our solar system and every extraterrestrial can tell you if the et arrived as a plasma ball through the heart of the sun then have a conversation but if your et arrived in heavy metal you know they're from the wrong side of the tracks <laughs> and probably you should duck <laughs> so the plasma beings who can who can get it through the heart of the sun are are the ones who actually can grow up. And remember, going out through the heart of the sun is not escapism, no, it's called graduating from kindergarten. That's why they call them sun gods, and that's why the Anu was both the, the, the name of Enki's father, Anu, as well as the heart of the sun. Because basically a plasma big enough to inhabit a star is the only way to grow up. And it's the, it's the reason you use a fractal of Orion in almost every ancient star map. It's called plasma projection. And plasma projection is the only real definition of remote viewing and astral travel, which is why, you know, the Egyptians believed that their pharaoh had to be fired if he couldn't make rain, <laughs> and which is why Tutankhamun learned how to make rain. And I have a fragment of that soul memory, and I can make rain on good days. I cannot stop it, but I, you know, I have ended a few droughts in my day. Most of my friends can tell you, uh, and I'm not very disciplined about it. Uh, I think Rolling, Th Rolling Thunder could do better. But the point would be that uh, Tutankhamun was a rainmaker because after a hundred generations of the yearning of their ancestors at the moment of death was, if I can't make rain, I'm going to get fired as Pharaoh. So eventually your kids learn how to make rain. And and they used his DNA for that. And, and the elementals are attractive. It has to do with the physics of precipitation. It's, it's quite an interesting story about the karma. But remember, the Egyptian believed that if their Osiris didn't inhabit the sun, the whole thing was going to fall apart. Well, they were right. Do you see that stars do not make us uh, as a whim? No, stars need something we make centripetal force, which is why the solar flare has changed so dramatically 11 times measured when more than a million children sang the, sang the same song at the same time. Why? Because we made a centripetal something that our star needs.
So invitation to become sun god, the real meaning of ascension. I'm going to say thank you very much. Any questions? Happy to be here, Neil, and uh, hope this is a shareable wave. Thank you.